Hey everyone, we are back. Um, Lindsay here and mom. She is going to show us how to do another pillow finish with our B cross stitches. And you can use this technique really for any of your finishes. Um, mom found this inspiration on Pinterest and I believe it was from Stitching Dreams. Um, we couldn't really find if there was a tutorial. She just saw the picture and we are trying to recreate it. So bear with us. This is our first time making a finish this way. And um, so let's get started. So tell us what you did first of all with your stitching, Mom. Okay, so um, I actually did stitch the hive rolls um, when Lindsay created it and I just absolutely loved it. But I wanted to stitch um, just a portion of it, and so I picked just a portion. And what I what I liked out of the chart the most was "Be Sweet Like Honey." And the one reason why I picked it is I just absolutely love the honey pot. I just think that is the cutest little thing. And so, you know, I I kept the little uh, border up here for this, and then the border down here. And I just think it just turned out really cute. And then I did see that little post about that pillow. And I loved how she did the little extra cross stitch down here. So take it apart so they can see it's a whole separate piece. Yes. And so it's a whole separate piece. And what I did is I just picked one of the bees. And I believe it was this one here in the chart. But you could pick any one. I mean, I just love that one too. So anyway, so I cut... I, I found me a two and a half inch ruler square and I just centered him and he's a two and a half inch block. So what you're going to do is, depending on your little coordinating uh, piece, you are going to use that dimension. So we decided a two and a half inch and that gives us room on all sides for a seam allowance. Yes. So let's say your piece is a little bit bigger or smaller. Um, whatever piece you decide is the same width As you're going to cut your fabric strips. Yes. All right, mom. So what I'm going to do is I picked my fabric out of what I'm going to do. So like Lindsay said, bear with us. We're going to see if we can do this without. We're going to do it together. We're going to do it together. <laughs> and, and I cut this a little more and I'm just going to cut him off a little. <laughs> And I'm gonna take him over to the sew machine here. And gotta have my... So she has her main piece, which she has squared up. Um, she's yes. left about an inch on all sides. And you're gonna do your two and a half inch strip right sides together. Okay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and... Quarter inch seam. Yeah. piece she has there is just a, a liter and under it just helps yep. so your <laughs> your threads don't get so nested. then I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna iron over here to my little iron thing give it a little press okay so I'm so she has gonna... a little overage so she's gonna trim that off yeah so we have a nice straight piece to work with. Okay. So now I have that one. Now I need to sew. I'm going to actually... You need, probably need to square that yeah. up. Yeah. I'm just going to straighten him up a little. He's a little wonky. So I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to take my B and I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna sew him to, onto my strip. So right sides together on um, your bottom two and a half inch strip. And, sorry guys. Quarter inch seam allowance. All right, so we're gonna take back and to the iron. So now I need 
need to put him on so there, there. I do want to mention the reason we did, you have to have everything the same so you can make sure these line up and nest together. Yeah. All right, Mom. So now I'm going to just put him on this side. And I'm going to turn this this way and see how it just nests right in there like that and go over to my machine. Sorry, there's a lot of back and forth on the yeah. machine for this one. So, let's see. I'm really excited about this one. This can't be. She has a, a pretty large tail of fabric, but it's I, we like to leave plenty of fabric and then we trim it to size later. Yes. It just makes it easier and you're yeah. not um, short on your fabric accidentally. Yeah. So I'm just going to trim that little tail off. Now she's going to give it a press. And see what he looks like. Oh, they're oh, so cute. He's so cute. Okay, so now... Now, in the picture, um, the inspiration piece had Rick Rack, and we were trying to decide the best way to put this on, and we have decided... I'm going to sew it, so I'm going to change my thread. Okay, so I do want to mention you could probably get away with uh, glue, like hot gluing it, if you wanted. If you want to keep it uh, all sewn, get a coordinating thread color which mom is putting on her machine now i'm to, leaving the bottom white and she's going to just carefully sew the rick rack on okay so which side are you gonna so you're I gonna do I'm the gonna, bottom i'm first. gonna do the bottom first and i'm just gonna i'm gonna just put it right on that line and go slow. Okay. And probably gonna just leave a little. I'm actually gonna come over here, Mom. Okay. Sorry. It's okay. All right. So I'm just gonna pick the middle of my rick rack. And um, don't try and stretch your rick rack. No. Because then it will bunch. Just go slow and go down the middle of your rick rack and. You could increase your stitch length so it's a little um, longer stitches if you want. It's really your personal preference. We're kind of doing this on the fly. On the fly. You're learning as we're learning. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now she's going to grab. The other, I'm just going to stay over here while you grab that other Rick Rack. Okay, so now I'm going to grab this Rick Rack. The other piece. And now I'm going to go down. So she has left a little bit of a tail on all the sides. Um, we'll, those will be sewn into the pillow Yeah. when we sew the backing on. Um, if you feel more comfortable pinning, go ahead and yep, pin. By all means. Yep. I am not a pinner. I am with certain things, but this is just easier. I think on it this. moves a lot, and yeah. I feel like if you don't pin it, you have more control over where it goes. Yeah. All right, so we're going to head over back to the cutting mat. Okay. Don't mind the mess. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we just have fun here. Okay. I'm All right, Mom. Gonna... Let's... Okay, so now you have your piece. And All now... right, so let's just get a close-up of your sewing. Very nice. Okay. So, um, I believe now I'm just going to do my backing. So I picked a piece for my backing. Just trying to see. We'll just do face to face, just like this. 
and then I'm gonna go over and I'm just gonna do a quarter of an inch, would you say? All the way yeah. around. Mm -hmm. So she's gonna sew a quarter inch all the way around her. I'm just gonna leave my green thread in, it won't show. Might help you guys. And I just, again, I just start in the middle of a length. I don't start on a corner. I, I don't like starting on corners. And I just lay it flat, try not to stretch. And you can pin this if you want as well. Yep. It's totally up to you what makes you more comfortable. backing on my cross stitch. I am no by all means a a, <laughs> a clean back stitch or backside stitcher. <laughs> okay, and I'm just give it a little back stitch. Now I'm gonna take it over and do some trimming. Alright. We're almost done I think. Yep. And I'm sorry, all the movement on the camera. We are not professionals <laughs> as far as filming. Yeah. So. So I'm just cutting off my ex, my ex excess. Um, just do a quarter inch away from your seam allowance, and she did so all the way around. Again, if you've seen the other pillow tutorials, uh, we cut the back. She's just trimming the corners to reduce bulk in those seams. Don't go into your seam allowance. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's there's my back. So I'm gonna take it apart. Pull that apart so I know I don't have my cross stitch. Yeah, that would be I a have, sad day if you I have seen people do that. Yeah, gone all the way through and accidentally trimmed your stitch. <laughs> yeah. This actually turns out to be a little bit bigger pillow, but I just think it's going to be really super cute. And again, this we just want to show you guys techniques so that you could do this on any piece that you yes. are working on. It doesn't have to be this specific stitch. As long as you know the technique, you can make it your own. Yeah, I can't wait to try this with the other things. I'm, I already have an idea in my mind for another one. I love minis, like small little things. Okay. And so, so she's just pressing it. Oh my gosh, look how cute and that there is. It is. And so now the, the one I seen is it had like a little ribbon and so we're going to button and a button. And so we're going to pick a ribbon. I don't believe we picked one, but we well, will. It had it on the top, but I don't want to pick a ribbon because it's the, the flower. And I think so will be cute enough. you think just the mm -hmm. flower? Okay, so what I did is we're going to we're gonna actually glue that flower on. You could uh, sew it on, but I cut the backing off and then I... It just... So we're just going to put a little dollop of glue there and just press it and down. And you don't have to put a button there if you don't want to. You can do what... Make it your own. Make yep, it make how it your own you how you want to do it. Okay, so now I am just going to grab my little bag of stuffing. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. And we're going to stuff it with some stuff I can. helps to like like mom how she's pulling it apart it it helps to not have like uh bulky areas yeah in the pillow well, and it, will, it just makes it easier to get it to go where it needs to go in there i can't make, wait to make one of these too 
I'm gonna have to pick something fun. Oh my gosh, can you imagine doing one, one of the little ones that they have out with all the little stitching things and one of those little red pin cushions? Oh, that would Wouldn't be, that be so cute? cute, Mom. Maybe I'll have to do that. Yeah. This one's a big pillow. It's gonna need a lot more stuffing. So one thing you would need to keep in mind is the little mini stitch at the bottom. I would not go any smaller than a one and a half inch square. If you go much small, like, because you know, you have to account for your seam allowance. Yeah. Um, so I think the two and a half inch is a great size. Oh my gosh, look how cute that is. I'm going kind of close. Very cute, Mom. Okay, so then the last step is actually covering the back, and it's just basically... If you've seen the other tutorials, yeah. you just cut your felt. Um, okay. We like to... Or wool. We're using wool this on these cute. ones. We have a houndstooth uh, pattern-looking one and a herringbone pattern-looking one Oops. in uh, gold and black to match the bee and she's just using pinking shears yeah. um, so like that's really kind of wonky <laughs> while well, we are doing it on the fly yeah so I'm just gonna put that there okay. and then I think what I'm gonna do is just kind of I'll, I'll sew it on to where it's angled off mm -hmm. Um, did you want me to show them how I do that? No, uh, the other tutorial we did for pillow, we have, she shows how to I just to do a running, it. like a running stitch all the way around it and, mm -hmm. and everything. And then that attaches it and it covers the pillow. So Super again. cute. All right. We hope you guys liked this other technique for making a pillow. We hope you use it and be sure to like, subscribe. And if you do happen to make a pillow like this, tag us at primrose cottage stitches on our instagram we're always sharing your work so we can't wait to see what you guys do with this tutorial we'll talk to you later